a cavity filter is a very sharp tuned circuit useful for many applications in radio. You'll see that there's a couple of little loops made of wire. These are for input and output terminals. Though in some cases you'll only need one of them. I should mention that I built this just to prove the concept worked. A real cavity filter would be made out of copper and if not aluminium. And there would be some really good connections between the parts. You particularly don't want things to shake loose because even a small amount of shake will greatly change the frequency that it resonates at. And that's important when the filter is very sharp. My particular unit has an aluminium tube inner. Not sure where it came from but you can see the handle here of plastic that covers it. The purpose of that is to vary the resonant frequency. With it pulled out the resonant frequency is very high in the UHF range though I don't have equipment to measure it and when it's almost all the way in then it's around 400 megahertz. So if I pull it out a little bit it resonates around 430 megahertz in the 70 centimeter band. You can tell that by putting it on a nano VNA which you'll see in a minute. The connection here isn't ideal but what I used here was a clamp that came from one of the larger electrolytic type capacitors. At the moment the screw is loose enough for me to slide it in and out but once I've got a setting I'm happy with then I can just tighten up this screw and it can stay fixed. I've used a file to scrape some of the paint off so there's a good contact between the lid and the body of the container. Though if you're doing this properly I'd have filed a bit longer and scraped even more off. Anyway, what I've done is good enough just to prove that it works. It's going to be lossy, it won't have as high a Q as a proper filter, but at least it demonstrates that it works and will give you some ideas for when you build your own. I'll have some links below to what other people have done. One particularly ingenious idea is to get two buckets end to end. You can get those from hardware stores and because the buckets are something like 25 or 30 centimeters high the length that you've got is enough to build a cavity filter for two meters where the length of the inner needs to be just under 50 centimeters for your quarter wavelength. In terms of dimensions an important one is the length of this inner which needs to be around a quarter wavelength. One thing that some filters have is a little screw on thing so you can vary its length in fine increments. Ideally it's threaded because you'll need that for the fine adjustments. Another possibility is having a disc to form a capacitor. That adds capacitance when you screw a lid which is another plate on a thread. As it gets closer and closer the capacitance increases and the resonant frequency drops. That might be suitable if your middle thing is a little bit too short for the frequency that you need. There are many uses for a cavity filter like this. For instance, you could set it up as a crystal set, like SM0VPO. He's used it to receive signals in the UHF to 900 megahertz range. Another possibility is a bandpass filter. Or you could make it a signal generator. If you applied a crystal oscillator or oscillator module to its inputs, then you could set the setting so that you've got an output only on 70 centimeters. That's possible because it's operating as a sharply tuned bandpass filter. The bandpass characteristics could also be useful if you have a broadband receiver. For instance, those 433 MHz remote control or data receivers have a very broad input bandwidth and poor selectivity. They can easily be triggered by other signals which reduces their utility for long range tests even though they are quite sensitive. A possibility could be to connect one of these in line and achieve some better front end rejection. Then there's something that was invented by a Russian guy called Theremin. 
most known in electronic music circles. It was actually a unusual type of bug which was completely passive yet it could retransmit signals heard in a room. Most famously when the Russians bugged the US back in the late 40s early 50s until it was discovered. Look up the thing. Yep that's what it was called. It was a passive cavity resonator built into an American Eagle that was given as a gift from the Russians. The idea was that when the thing was excited with some VHF radio signals and voices vibrated a membrane which gave some FM modulation to it the vibrating membrane could cause some FMing and the signal could be re-radiated to be picked up by Russian spies. A very clever idea, one that only became public much later on. This is a broadband noise source. It uses two or three transistors and an LED. It generates RF noise from a few kilohertz up into the UHF range. I've got a receiver set to SSB on 438 MHz. Connected to the antenna is the output of this broadband oscillator. Just applied power, and as you can hear, there's some white noise. I've got one coupling loop connected to the receiver and the other to the output of this RF noise generator. When I slide in and out, there should be a noise peak. I'm just interrupting the power. And you can hear the key clicks as I switch it on and off. That's more noticeable than when I have the thing on. As you can hear, there's a fair amount of loss in the filter, but if I was to arrange the coupling coils, then that should cut the loss down quite a bit. What if you don't have an RF noise generator like this? What you could do is just get a file like this and run it along the outside of the antenna socket or you could just uh, tap it with a screwdriver. Now, if we slide this slider in and out, I've just um, slid in. You can hardly hear the grating. Just to prove that it's the cavity can having the effect, because of its high Q, I've pulled the connection to the transceiver out from it and just filing it, you don't hear anything. So it's purely the effect of a very selective tuned circuit. Here's a look on the Nano VNA. I've made some small changes to the coupling loops and the dip is deeper. Another thing is that it varies when you wriggle the plunger, indicating there may be a poor connection. A proper cavity filter would be bolted or soldered to assure a good electrical contact. Now I've got it receiving on FM. In the other room I've got a handheld set to 146 MHz. moved the position of the filter and as you can see the signal drops enormously.
a drawing of the insides of a cavity filter. This is a cylinder. There's another cylinder or tube inside it. The um, length of it is about one quarter wavelength from there to there. So that means that these are quite long, particularly on lower VHF bands. For instance, on 70 centimetres, your tin just needs to be a bit under 20 centimetres because that's a bit over a quarter wavelength and the inside a quarter wavelength, so about 16, 17 centimetres, something like that. Whereas for two metres, the inner bit needs to be around 48, 49 centimetres, that's a quarter wavelength. And for six metres, you are up to over 1.3 metres. And then when you get up to 10 metres, and people do build cavity filters for 29 megahertz FM, then you're talking about something like two and a half metres long, um, a quarter wavelength. Uh, tubing here in the middle, and this is just a metal cylinder. Um, you could experiment with things like biscuit tins like I did for UHF. Now, I've got here a BNC connector and a coupling loop. Um, you can experiment with the length of that. You can fiddle around with its position relative to the center quarter wavelength element. I've only drawn one connection there, but if you wanted to, you could put another BNC and have another loop here. And with your second one, that means you can use it as a bandpass filter. So you can have your input here, and your output here. There might be other cases where you might need to add a third one, but generally speaking, it's just one or two. Now, I won't go into this into any detail, but apparently you can change the bandpass shape of this if you connect an extra very low value capacitor or inductance across from here. That can be useful if you want a bigger drop off above or below your center frequency. If you don't do anything, like I haven't done anything extra, then it will be symmetrical about the center frequency. So that's basically it. Now, if you wanted to make some fine adjustments, then maybe you could have this so you vary the length. What I did, as you saw in the pictures before, I had a clamp down here and I had an extension of the pole and a handle. However, it is quite finicky. And especially if you build it properly, then you are going to be struggling to adjust it really easily unless you have something like a screw thread which gives some mechanical reduction and allows some fine lengthening and shortening. Another thing I found really important and the unit that you saw was um, a little bit intermittent is you need really good connections um, between the top of the case and the central resonator element. Because it was easy to do, my biscuit tin just had this as your lid and that meant that you could just put the rest of the tin on and take it on and off. But longer term, that's not a good idea because of the contacts between the lid and the rest of the container. So there's other ways you could get around it possibly. If you wanted to make fine adjustments, as I mentioned before, some means of slightly lengthening or shortening this, or maybe you could have a plate on top here or a disc and another disc and a screw thread here and then you can just um, slightly vary the capacitance and that will drop the resonant frequency. So that's one way of getting a really fine frequency adjustment if you want to use this seriously. This is a quick story about a cavity filter. This one's very makeshift, but if you can do better, and it will take some effort to do so, it opens up a whole range of experiments you can do particularly in the VHF, UHF and microwave range. As a first one to start experimenting with, I suggest starting with 70 centimetres, or possibly 23, because the higher the frequency, the smaller and easier they are to work with.